And then this is actually something, you know, I don't know exactly what to do with this. This was from our first foster daughter. She made this in art class, left it with us, and I haven't had a place for it. It's definitely something we want to keep in memory of her. Uh, we still have not seen or heard from her. I just don't know where this belongs, so still working on that. Recently, I've been finding myself just really overwhelmed um, for quite a while, like many of you. Um, we were working from home, we were juggling the two kids, um, not being able to really get out um, and go anywhere. And what became apparent to me is that even though I feel like I identify as a very organized, minimalistic person, really I had some room to grow. When you're confined to you know, just your home and you have little ones that are constantly pulling things out um, and don't fully know yet how to put things away, Darcy does, but Sawyer obviously is too young for that. You start to really notice how much stuff you have and things start to collect and it's hard to maintain. And so that's why I'm really excited to share that we've partnered with Skillshare and I want to show you a course that has really helped me out. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Here you can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. So I found this course on everyday minimalism by Erin Boyle and what I really, really loved about her approach is just that she really wasn't looking for people to make a crazy overhaul, but just make some small steps towards minimalism. And that's something that didn't feel super overwhelming. Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So I've gone through the class and I'm going to share with you um, kind of my takeaways and also show you the project that I'm going to tackle. All right, so first I'm going to take you on a quick little tour of some of my problem spots. So the first one that I'm going to show you is our closet. So this is kind of a catch-all closet. Um, you'll see a lot of unused space right there. Um, a lot of kind of chaos. It is June and we still have all of these winter coats. Um, so this is a spot that really is some, some chaos. You'll see randomly we have this giant pile of stuff. Uh, we try to keep Sawyer's toys pretty, uh, you know, minimal, but, you know, he's a baby. And so, you know, you want to have different things for him. And if you have small children, you know that toys just seem to multiply. Um, even if you have the best intentions and you try to be as minimalistic as possible, somehow between Christmases and birthdays and, you know, going shopping and finding sales or going to thrift stores or garage sales, which if you don't know, John is um, the Cincinnati picker. And so we love going to garage sales and it's hard to resist something that is like 50 cents or a dollar and you know, it's going to bring your kid joy. Um, but at the same time, you want to keep things minimal. So we also have this kitchen that has a few toys. And then I'll also show you something that I'm actually proud of this, which needs a little bit of work. This is Darcy's organization um, of all of her things, or most of them. And what I've done is I've really categorized them really well. All of these have a specific purpose of learning. And especially during quarantine when the kids were at home, this was super functional because we had everything we needed to really keep her busy and active using her mind. Uh, we also brought in a nanny uh, part-time uh, during the week so that, you know, she could actually get that one-on-one -on -one interaction while John and I were able to work because we still had to keep working. Uh, but she was able to continue to work on stuff and we had everything, like we have everything. We even have this, which, if you have um, babies, uh, this is teach my baby. And then we also have teach my toddler. These are great things for young kids. I'm gonna put a link in the description because this is a really great tool. So it's really hard because all of these things serve a purpose. You have creative elements. We have her activity desk. Like this is an amazing thing that her papa got her. Does she use it all the time? No. Then you can see Miss A and I are trying to do a lot of puzzles keeping us busy. Um, right now we're still in the middle of a beautiful puzzle. 
that is just taking up space. This that fell off, I was nursing for a really long time. I haven't had to be pumping. If you are a mother, you know these dreadful tools. Um, actually haven't had to use them for the longest time, but they're still like hanging out. There's just stuff everywhere. Just get piles, piles. And I know you guys understand this. Like I know you feel this pain. Like come on, like let's just pare it all down. We have drawers of papers and it's just something that like you think that you're gonna get to later. Or, like it's not important at the time, but then when are you gonna get to it? So what I loved about this course is that it really wasn't, you know, forcing you to take a look at everything. It wanted you to pick like your top three problem areas and even like places that have the most potential. And that is makes it so that it's not overwhelming and you can focus on a small area and that makes it seem like, okay, I can do this. Another thing that the course talked about is you don't have to give everything away to be minimalistic. Um, you know, minimalism is not a one and done. It's really about, you know, a lifestyle. And so they're not asking you to, you know, box up everything that you have and get rid of it, but really find the things, the items that really serve you and your family. And then maybe you can still look to see, you know, if something is not serving its purpose, you know, so take our closet, for example, if you have three jackets, is that really necessary? Or could you you know, work with just one and then there's less, you know, space being taken up so you can put maybe a purse on there instead of all coats. And then another step is really identifying what you want to bring into your home. Um, so what choices are you going to make? And I like making choices where something is going to serve multiple functions. Um, that way you can have one item that's going to serve three different needs. So I took a look at my problem areas in the house. Definitely this closet is the winner. I am going to focus on this area. I'm gonna show you why. It's summertime, we do not need these jackets right now. This could be served to at least like clear up some space. It's just, it's unnecessary. It's just wasted space right now. We could be doing something else with it. Also, again, you know, here's a cart that we were using when I was, you know, having to pump when I was working full time and, you know, all of that. And now it's halfway empty and it's just sitting in the closet, taking up space. We mean well, we have these beautiful hooks for organization. This backpack we don't need anymore because, you know, I'm not going to and from work now that I'm working from home. We have our diaper bag, you know, that comes in handy just to have there. We have some things that um, daycare has given us, but honestly, we don't have a purpose for it. So this is something where, yes, it's a nice bag. Do we need it? No. For that reason, it's probably going to be donated. And this is another thing that Aaron talked about. You don't have to buy expensive systems to like be organized. You know, we looked at this closet before and we thought, oh, this is a beautiful shelf. Uh, we have little baskets in here and this is going to solve all of our problems. Well, guess what? It didn't because the behavior didn't change. We didn't figure out, okay, what is the purpose of each of these baskets, each of these shelves? We didn't really know. And so we put something in here. We spent our money, but it didn't serve us well. So now that's what I'm going to do um, today. I am going to take a look at this closet, figure out, you know, what makes sense, what gets to go, what is not in its right place. And that way, you know, it might free up some space elsewhere in, in the house. So I'm gonna get to working on this and I'm gonna show you what it looks like afterwards. may not seem like a huge difference, but I'm gonna show you what just 15 minutes in this closet created. So first, we did pull a couple of jackets. Um, I kind of have to rethink here because Darcy has four different jackets and I feel like that's a little too many, but there's a vest, there's a rain jacket, there's a lightweight jacket, and there's a jean jacket. So I feel like that's overkill. Um, I have to decide which one makes sense to go. I think I have an idea. So one of those is getting eliminated. Um, because we took out this cart, because this cart is going to find a home somewhere else um, where it is needed, uh, the only thing out of this whole cart that we really needed were the bibs. 
So I just went ahead and hung them here, which actually is not that far off from his diaper changing table. Um, so I like to keep things kind of, you know, somewhat in the right place. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, hold on, bam. Went ahead and I clipped these in here because when you need one, you can just unclip it here individually. And now all of Sawyer's stuff is in the same spot. Awesome, perfect. Okay, so now we're back here. The cart allows for more space. We put the dog toys in here just because Sawyer likes to play with them. We have the tunnel up there that Sawyer loves. And then over here we have a lot of saved space. So I went ahead and I brought over the puzzles and placed them down at the bottom. I have some crafts and activities that Miss A and I are going to be doing, so I kept all of that together. And then there are a few things here that I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna use these top shelves, but look at all of that space. So this is where I want things to go in a place where we'd be able to find them. Um, but for now, so even though this space is empty, it is going to serve a really nice purpose. And like, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Like I have a Survivor buff that I think John found at a garage sale and I love Survivor, but I don't know what to do with this. Where do I put this? Oh wait, I know, okay. This goes into my fan area where I have my favorite books. Augustine Burroughs is my favorite author. I love memoirs. Um, so I have my couple of Funko Pops this is exclusively Harry Potter. Let me just take a quick second and look at all of the beauty. My sister made this. Yes, it's beautiful, I know. So we're not gonna put it up there, but I think it makes sense in here. So we are going to find a place for it so that I can appreciate my Survivor fandom in a way in which it is not just sitting. Yes, that's beautiful. As if it were just casually tossed there. Fantastic. Okay, back, back to the closet. This is Miss A's um, equipment that she needs to send off to the high school now that school is over. So I have to drop that off tomorrow. It was kind of out of sight, out of mind. So I need to make sure that gets going. I also had Darcy's Stitch Fix box. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out um, with her most recent Stitch Fix. Um, you know, again, it just kind of gets shoved in here, which is fine. I'd rather it be in here than out on a counter. But then we have some miscellaneous things. So here is a security system that John is putting together. So this is gonna get taken care of soon. We have some extra sanitizer, obviously with the condition of things, we like to have, you know, things on hand. A little workout towel. So this actually makes sense to go with the roller. So maybe there's an opportunity to put like things together. And then this is actually something, you know, I don't know exactly what to do with this. This was from our first foster daughter. She made this in art class, left it with us, and I haven't had a place for it. And it's definitely something we want to keep in memory of her. Uh, we still have not seen or heard from her, um, but I just don't know where this belongs. So still working on that. So for now it sits up here and you know, again, kind of the, the place for misfit items. So I have one donation bag. Um, so few items in here that get to be donated. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up before I donate it. So basically what I'll do is I'll walk around the house and try to find items that, you know, really just don't serve a purpose. Um, you know, they just aren't being played with, you know, toys that aren't being played with by the kids um, and go ahead and fill that up before I send it off. Then I have an entire bag of things that I'm gonna reach out to my neighborhood group and see if any, um, you know, moms who are nursing would like some equipment. Um, also, I have some other items that I'm gonna just, you know, donate to somebody who can put it to good use. You know, for me, I don't like to waste, and that's one thing that the course talked about is being minimalistic is also about sustainability. And so I don't wanna just throw all of these things out. <laughs> you know, that's not gonna, you know, help the problem. You know, I want them to be used by people who, you know, are gonna use them for good. So those items are gonna get rehomed. I'm gonna celebrate the fact that the closet has been you know, managed. Um, these items right here, you know, this is something 
Look, it's a 31 thing, a little cinch bag. I couldn't pass it up. It was, I think, $2. Um, and when you know that something is, you know, really expensive, full price, and you see it for a good deal, you're like, oh, I know I'm gonna find a, you know, a purpose for that. I haven't found a purpose yet. I thought it could be used for some of the kids' toys. So I'm gonna look around and see what makes sense. If not, I'm gonna admit defeat that that $2 was not well spent, and I will give it to somebody else who can put it to good use. These items, we do have, you know, a place in our basement um, for different organizational containers, and we kind of keep them on hand in case we need it. Uh, we have the luxury of having a little bit of space in the basement where we can store things like that. And we just went through and we organized everything. We donated a lot of stuff in the basement um, that had just been collecting dust. We knew it could be used for a better purpose at a different home. So some of these things will go into the uh, basement in case we need them for later, but otherwise we'll go ahead and donate them. Awesome closet, yeah, yeah. Um, second is going around and filling that bag before I go ahead and donate it. So then tomorrow I'm gonna find a different area of the home so that I can apply everything I learned from this Everyday Minimalism course brought to you by Skillshare. Mm -hmm.